58 deaths from welding and cutting incidents, including explosions, electrocutions, asphyxiation, falls, and crushing injuries were reported by the Bureau of Labor Statistics every year. For the construction industry, welder's flash, burned to the eyes, accounts for 5.6% of all construction eye injuries. Welders, cutters, and their supervisors shall be trained in the safe operation of the equipment, safe welding cutting practices, and welding, cutting, respiratory protection, and fire protection. Fire extinguishers are to be provided in the immediate vicinity of all welding and cutting operations. General mechanical or local exhaust ventilation is to be provided whenever welding, cutting, or heating is performed in any confined space. Hot work permits shall be provided. All welding, cutting, and heating operations shall be ventilated, either natural or mechanical such that personnel exposures to hazardous concentrations of airborne contaminants are within acceptable limits. Oxygen cutting using either an iron powder or chemical flux, gas shielded arc cutting and plasma cutting shall employ local mechanical exhaust ventilation or other means adequate to remove the fumes generated. A good housekeeping plan shall be developed and implemented for all work areas where welding, cutting, or heating operations involving materials of toxic significance. The housekeeping plan shall require all surfaces to be regularly HEPA vacuumed and wet wiped. The frequency shall maintain the surfaces free of contamination and will be dependent on the frequency, type, and volume of welding, cutting, or heating completed in the area. When welding near walls, partitions, ceilings, or roofs of combustible construction, fire-resistant guards shall be provided to prevent ignition. General ventilation to maintain welding smoke and fumes within safe limits. When welding in confined spaces, mechanical ventilation or local exhaust. If ventilation blocks the access or egress to a confined space, airline and attendant are required. When welding or cutting must be done in a location where combustible or flammable materials are located, Inspection and authorization by the GDA shall be required before such operations are begun. During welding or cutting, a fire watch shall stand with a fire extinguisher equipment readily available and be trained in its use and in sounding an alarm in the event of a fire. A fire watch shall be maintained for at least one hour after completion of the welding or cutting operation to extinguish possible smoldering fires. Employees performing welding, cutting, and heating work shall be protected by personal protective equipment appropriate for the hazards they may encounter and based upon the results of an AHA conducted specifically for the welding, cutting, or heating operation that they will be performing. All required respiratory, eye and face, noise, head, foot, and skin protection equipment shall be selected and used in accordance with sections 10B, 10C, and Section 5. Appropriate protective clothing shall be considered and may include shield or helmet with filtered lens, fire resistant gloves, a leather apron, boots, leather spats, felt skull cap or beret, and overalls. Protective clothing shall be woolen instead of cotton, free from oil, buttoned at the sleeves and collars, without cuffs on the trousers, made of leather or other suitable materials for capes or shoulder covers, and flame-proof for gloves used in welding and cutting. This illustration shows a welder properly outfitted, eye safety shield, flame-proof skull cap, helmet fitted with filtered lenses, the collar is buttoned, is wearing fire protection gauntlet gloves, a shirt with full sleeves, no pockets, a leather apron or the shirt outside of the trousers, no cuffs on the pants, safety shoes, and clean fire retardant clothing. This picture shows a welder with non-compliant PPE. An eye shield is worn without a hard hat. Two basic types of welding, arc welding and oxyacetylene or fuel gas welding.
Arc welding and cutting operations shall be shielded by non-combustible or flame-proof screens that will protect employees and other persons working in the vicinity from the direct rays of the arc, sparks, molten metal, splatter, and chipped slag. All structural welding performed on critical items such as scaffolding, shoring, forms, ladders, pilings, etc., as well as other critical items as determined by a qualified person shall only be performed by welders certified in accordance with the American Welding Society standards using qualified and approved welding practices and procedures. American Welding Certification or Approved Equivalent Organization which trains to American Welding Society standards. Arc welding and cutting operations shall be shielded by non-combustible or flame-proof screens that will protect employees and other persons working within 35 feet from the direct rays of the arc, sparks, molten metal, spatter, and chipped slag. Welding curtains shall be suitable for the welding process and amperage. Welding curtains shall provide a high degree of safety against ultraviolet radiation and blue light. Manual electrode holders must be designed for that purpose and capable of carrying the maximum rated electrode current. Only fully insulated holders shall come into contact with a welder's hands. Arc welding cables shall be completely insulated and flexible. Cables shall be free of splices at a minimum 10 feet from electrode cable end. Cables in need of repair shall not be allowed. Ground return cables must have sufficient current carrying capacity for the maximum voltage. No grounding on pipelines containing gases or flammable liquids. Always shield operations with flame-proof screens to protect employees' eyes. Welding curtains shall be fade resistant and flame retardant. The use of blue tinted welding curtains is prohibited if observers are in the work area as they provide very little blue light protection. All arc welding shall include consideration for ventilation, which is mandatory in a confined space, fire retardant curtain, fire watch, and proper grounding. Never ground to pipes with gas or flammables. Equipment shall be shut down when the leads are unattended. There are four major types of gases used for heating and cutting. Plasma cutting, LP gas or propane, a MAP gas mixture, and acetylene, which is the most common. Plasma arc cutting equipment shall be installed, maintained, and operated in accordance with the National Electrical Code and manufacturer's instructions. All cables and torch leads shall be inspected before each use. Any damaged cables and torch leads shall be replaced before use. All consumables, nozzles, electrodes, etc., shall be verified for proper installation before each use. All torches used in plasma cutting shall contain a trigger safety device to prevent accidental contact. Thermite is a pyrotechnic composition of metal powder fuel and metal oxide. When ignited by heat, thermite undergoes an exothermic oxidation reduction reaction. Most varieties are not explosive, but can create brief bursts of high temperature in a small area. The mold for a thermite weld shall be dried thoroughly and provided cover before the charge is ignited to prevent spray back during the thermite welding reaction. Thermite welding molds shall not be removed until sufficient cooling has taken place as stated in the manufacturer's literature. This picture illustrates a thermite weld of railroad rail. For oxyacetylene cutting and welding, this is what to look for. The tank shall be secured in place on either a hand truck, on fixed or portable racks, and with a substantial tie-off. Flash arresters and check valves at regulators and torches, and the wrench on the acetylene valve should only open a maximum of one half turn. The hoses are distinguished at the torch and the tanks. The green hose is the oxygen hose and contains a right hand thread. The red hose for the acetylene or the fuel gas has a left hand thread. Some of the problems associated with torches is clogged tips need to be cleaned with suitable devices. They should be inspected prior to each shift. Torches shall be lit by strikers or other approved methods. 
They shall not be lit with matches and not lit off of hot work. Reverse flow backflow arresters. For the gas line, it is red in color, and for the oxygen, it is green. They are typically two to three inches long. Gauges on the regulators. The regulators are provided with gauges to indicate high and low pressure. The bonnet is the weakest point on the regulator, and the adjusting screw shall be turned clockwise to turn on the regulator. The oxygen regulator is always green, contains right-hand threads, it has no pressure gauge limits, and the oxygen bottles are typically rated at 2200 PSI. The acetylene regulator is always red, has left-hand threads, maximum pressure should be 15 PSI, and the acetylene bottle is rated at 250 PSI. These are examples of different types of flashback arresters you may see at the job site for either the torch or the manifold or at the regulator or the torch. The storing of cylinders of oxygen and acetylene tanks can be on either fixed or portable racks or substantial hand trucks. They can be secured to a permanent and substantial structure with ropes, wire, or chain. Or they need to be separated at least 40 feet apart or with a one hour fire rated barrier at least five feet high between the oxygen and acetylene cylinders. Cylinders containing oxygen and acetylene or other fuel gas should not be taken into confined spaces. The protector cap protects the valve from being knocked off and must be in place when the regulators are off the tanks. Never allow oxygen to come in contact with oil, grease, or other petroleum bases. Never use oxygen for compressed air, and never move cylinders without the caps installed. What are explosions in hoses? There are two types, backfire and flashback. Backfire is an explosion usually confined to the torch head and usually has a popping sound. Flashback is an explosion that progresses back through the torch hose, and regulators. Backfires can be caused by tips being too close to the work being performed, loose connections, leaking hoses, incorrect gas pressures, and anything that causes a gas starvation at the torch tip. Flashback can be caused either by unstopped reverse gas flow or backfire. In summary, employees shall wear eye protection, shall wear protective clothing, Fire protection controls shall be established to provide adequate protection for the hot work, and ventilation shall be provided in confined spaces or enclosed spaces.